I would like to ask you two questions. Okay. Uh, while reading part one of the tradition and the individual talent, hmm. uh, the learners may be confused regarding T. S. Eliot's concept of tradition, hmm. whether he uses hmm. this term with positive connotation or negative. Okay. And secondly, uh, it will be interesting to know how the individual talent is associated with it. Okay. <coughs> Well, uh, I think in their unit, they begin with, by a general sense, the dictionary meaning of tradition, tradition, which connotes quite a few things, actually. It connotes that at a particular place, over a period of time, people living a life believe in certain principles, beliefs, and carry out a way of life. Now one can see this as certain aspects of it being negative, mm -hmm. certain aspects of being positive. Eliot mentions it. Eliot mentions that one means tradition often in the sense of the traditional. Okay. And when the moment we utter somebody is traditional, mm -hmm. especially Eliot speaking from a modern critic's point of view there is always this tension between somebody being traditional and somebody is a modern mm -hmm. as if modern automatically means good and okay. traditional automatically means not so good yes. undesirable mm -hmm. on the other hand countries nations they try to preserve their tradition mm -hmm as a heritage, as something which is an essential part of their culture and necessarily has to be handed down from generation to generation. Okay. So Eliot actually means the, the second positive sense. Okay. Although we have to be really reading between the lines of this essay and when we do so, we will realize that Eliot is actually criticizing the Romantics okay. with their great deal of emphasis on the individual. Achha. Now, the writer, Eliot says, should write with history in his bones. Mm. And Eliot is very Eurocentric. Okay. And what he says is that Europe, the continent of Europe is made up of so many nations. And after the First World War, it has the, the project of nationalization was almost complete and in Europe, that is. And then European countries still had colonies outside Europe after the First World War. But Europe consisting of various nations and each nation having a history of their own literature and then there is something called the greater European or the pan-European literary tradition with Greece being its cradle and all that. So what Eliot seems to suggest is that a new poet or the contemporary modern poet has to write with the awareness of a the literary tradition of his nation and the larger European literary tradition mm -hmm. he has to then not merely imitate that tradition he has to fit in within that tradition see how he can contribute to the tradition okay. and there by comes this aspect of the individual talent. talent. Throughout the essay, importantly, Eliot uses such words as surrendering to the tradition, okay. sacrificing one's own self. And these words come again as, as an opposite to Wordsworth and the Romantics upholding the self, mm -hmm. you know, okay. bringing the self in the focus. Mm -hmm. Whereas Eliot seems to be saying that 
that is not so important the self has to merge in okay. with the tradition and interestingly the study material mentions later on Harold Bloom would say mm -hmm. that uh, this is and some kind of an anxiety of influence mm -hmm. that is the current author feeling the pressure of uh, his or her uh, uh, creative predecessors mm -hmm. creative ancestors yes. Uh, looming large upon him or her. Now, so in that in that sense, then well, I mean, coming back to your question of about tradition, mm -hmm. Eliot sees it in the positive sense. Okay. He he wants to uh, assert that he is seeing this term in the very very positive sense. Uh, he puts great deal of responsibility, however, on the individual author. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Eliot himself, if we read his poems, we have to, in a way, become uh, 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 aware of anthropology, mm. French uh, uh, symbolist poetry, okay, Shakespeare, Christian religious tradition. Mm. So we have to really work in an interdisciplinary kind of a manner, mythology. Okay, o oriental influence mm -hmm. of the Upanishads, for example. And he brings it all together in his poetry. Now, being aware, being well versed with these diverse traditions. Mm -hmm. So that is tradition. Okay. Now, coming to this aspect called individual talent. talent yeah. Now, individual talent does not cut itself away from the tradition. Okay. Tradition for Eliot, as it is mentioned in the essay, is already an existing monument. Mm -hmm. okay. And the individual can only marginally add a bit, extend it a bit. If we go by the analogy of the monument, mm -hmm. then maybe we can add one floor, mm -hmm. we can construct a minaret, okay or something of that sort and thereby keeping the harmony of the overall structure okay. we beautify it we give it more meaning mm -hmm. and make our place the individual makes his or her, her own place mm -hmm. within the existing long history okay. tradition so uh, these are the two aspects but as we saw, on one hand, not only is Eliot criticizing the Romantics, but he seems to be carrying a thread forward from Matthew Arnold. Okay. With when Matthew Arnold talks about the historical sense, Matthew Arnold speaks about that he is Matthew Arnold being one of the earliest comparative critics, mm -hmm. where Matthew Arnold says that no individual writer has a sense of one's own one has to compare with the best that is available the best that is known and needs to be known mm -hmm. in the same way Eliot in this essay says no author makes sense all by himself okay now this is actually hinting out and hitting out at the romantics gotcha. that the authors often mm -hmm. they did not care for the society mm -hmm. those romantic poets and they wanted to be revolutionaries uh, that kind of a thing Eliot seems not at all okay. uh, to advocate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.